Okay, today I want to talk about debouncing. Now this is a term uh, named after a script that's used in the underscore JavaScript library. The purpose behind debouncing is, let's say you're trying to make frequent calls in an asynchronous way. So you're accessing a database, you're making an Ajax call, you're doing something repeatedly. Maybe the user is clicking multiple times on something, maybe the user is typing something, and you have to carry out the same actions again and again and again. And the problem is, because these calls that you're making are asynchronous, you've got no guarantee on the order that the results are coming back. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I've got an input field. The user is going to be typing something, and we're going to be doing a uh, autocomplete match against this list of words. Now, there are multiple matches depending on what I type. Sometimes there's one match, sometimes there's multiple matches. And I've got a little function set up that I'm going to be simulating as if I'm making a call to a server to do an autocomplete. My search function, so I have right now uh, an event listener on the input event. So as I'm typing into here, as I'm changing the value inside this input, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be calling the function called search search down here. I'm going to be getting the value of the event target, which is the input field. Taking that text value, I'm going to write out that I'm trying to match this. I'm going to get my UL right here called matches. And for each one of the fields that match, I want to write out the matching words. So as you type, I'm going to update this list with every keystroke to be the list of matching terms. Now the reason I'm not doing this on key press is that when you are typing, if you do the key down, the key up, or the key press event, those are all happening before the input event. And this is important because as you are typing, as those key press events are happening, that happens before the text field itself up here before this has been updated. So I hit the letter G. Key press is going to fire before the letter G has been added into this text field. And that means if I go to do something like this and say, give me the value of everything that's been typed in inside of that search box, I'm going to get everything up to, but not including the letter that I just typed. So we have to make sure that we use input and not key press here. So we want to do a match against what has been typed, the entirety of what has been typed inside that input field. I'm going to call a function called getList. I'm going to pass in this value. And what getList is going to do is it's going to return a promise to me. So I can use then and catch, turning this into an asynchronous thing. When I get the result, it's going to be a list. So this is going to be an array that comes back. I'll clear out the UL. If the list length is zero, I'll write no matches as the first list item. And if there is something in that list, I will loop through and write out each one of the list items. So this is a fairly simple function down here. The get list part, this is the thing that's doing the promise. This is what's going to be simulating the asynchronousness of it all. So get list, I'm passing in the text. That's the entirety of what's been typed inside that box. I'm returning. When this is called, I'm returning a promise object. So this whole thing, this function, this promise right here, this is what's being returned. We've got our resolve and our reject. Uh, and if you don't understand promises, I do have a video or a couple of videos on promises, actually. I'll put the links to those inside the comments so you can go and look at those if this doesn't make sense to you. When the resolve gets called, that's when the result is actually going to come back from this promise. And that is when the then will be called. So this is going to be called when the promise finishes, when it resolves. I'm generating a random number inside of here. And this is how I'm creating this asynchronous to simulate making an Ajax call. I'm doing a set timeout. And my set timeout is going to fire some random number between 0 and 1 second, so 1,000 milliseconds. The result will be different every time I call this function. So if I'm typing something with every keystroke, I'm making a call to this, I'm doing another promise, the amount of time it's going to take is going to be some random number between 0 and 1,000 or 999 milliseconds. 
that's just going to randomize the order in which the results come back, which is exactly what would happen if you were doing fetch calls or AJAX calls with every keystroke on the keyboard. So my set timeout function, what I'm doing is I'm creating a regular expression. I'm saying I'm going to take whatever was typed in here. Uh, oh, I'm doing this whole function. I'm binding it and passing in txt, the string, as my context for this. So I'm taking what was typed, that's what this to string will be, and I'm putting the little caret character in front of it. In a regular expression, that means anything that starts with whatever this value is. So the variable t from here, anything that starts with whatever that was, that's going to be my match. So I'm going to local storage. This is where I'm storing my list of characters, this list right here. In my init function at the same time as I added the event listener for input, I put all these terms in inside of local storage. That's where the list is, that's where I'm getting it from, but I'm pretending that it's coming from a server. All right, so I'm fetching my local storage item, I'm converting it from JSON. This is giving me an array of terms. I'm going to filter that array everywhere that my pattern, which is my regular expression, I'm testing it, I'm getting a true-false value back. So matches is going to be the reduced array, the array that only contains items that match my regular expression. So if I type the letter B, I'm going to local storage, I'm getting everything from there, and then I'm filtering that array to only send back the items that start with the letter B. And here, this is our resolve method, and we're sending back the array of things that match. Okay, so that's what's happening right now. We've got the input event, which is firing the search. We're getting the value of what's been typed. We're passing it over to get list, which is simulating a fetch call. And whatever the list is that comes back, we're writing that out. All right, so here we have on the page. And if I type slowly, so B, E, E, T, you can see that the order that this happened in it matched because I was typing slowly enough. I go back to the beginning. There, so I've typed beat, but I typed it quickly enough that the order that it matched was, okay, I've got something that matches all the characters, and then I've got something that matches this, and then I've got something that matches this, and then something that matches like this. So this is my final version although I should only be getting this one. It's just the order that the results came back didn't match the order in which I typed this and sent the request to the server. And that's what happens with fetch. This is what debounce is going to solve for us. All right, so we've got autocomplete sort of working. What we need to do now is we need to do a better version of making sure that this gives us results in the order that we expect. Debounce lets you call a function, but it makes sure you're not calling it too quickly. So I'm not calling it, you know, if I can type five characters in 10 milliseconds, okay, in one hundredth of a second I've typed five characters, probably not going to happen, but if that did, that means I'm firing off a request every two milliseconds. Okay, well that's too fast for the fetch results. I'm not, never going to get them back in the right order. But if I put some sort of governor on it, and that's what my efficient search is going to do. So if I, instead of calling my search method, call my efficient search method, now this function that I'm going to call in here, this is the exact same thing as I had before. So efficient search, the code right here, that is the exact same as the code for search. The only difference is that it's wrapped inside of this debounce function. So I'm passing this function over to debounce, and inside of debounce, what I'm saying is, all right, here's my governor. I don't want to call this function more than once every 300 milliseconds. So it'll attempt it again and again and again, but if it hasn't been 300 milliseconds, it just doesn't do the call. So it reduces the number of times the function has been called so that we are going to be guaranteed or a lot closer to guaranteed that the results are coming back in the order that we want. Now you can set this to anything you want. I've got it set to 300 milliseconds. I could make it one second, but that's going to 
feel really slow with the user. You have to balance it off. 300 milliseconds? Okay. Third of a second? That's not too bad for each keystroke. If you've got somebody who's typing really fast, they may notice the lag. Somebody who's typing slowly, they'll never notice that. If I bump this up to 2000, so once every two seconds make the call, there's going to be a, a noticeable lag for the user. Okay, so how does this work? We're passing this function into debounce. How is debounce going to work? So what the debounce function does, you pass in, close that again. So you pass in a function, you pass in a time, and then optionally you can pass in something to say, uh, run this immediately. So there's an, a little bit of an override if you want. I can say true, and it's going to call the function immediately regardless. I don't want to do that right now. I do want to use this 300 milliseconds. So I'm passing in a function, declaring a global variable called timeout, and I'm returning a function. So calling debounce sends back a function. That's what efficient search is. This is the function that comes back from debounce. And this is the thing up here that we're adding as the event listener. So we're calling efficient search multiple times. Every time there's a keystroke, we're calling efficient search. And it's going to run this function in here. There's been a closure created for timeout. It's going to be used inside this function. So let's take a quick look at what it's doing. Context, this, that's the, this object, args, arguments. So this function right here, whatever this is, arguments will be all of the arguments that are passed in. That means right here, this ev, this event, that is being passed into here, and that's what the arguments will be. Later, we'll come back to this one in a second. It's a function that we can call, call now. So we're deciding if we want to call the function right now. If Is it time yet to call it? Well, if immediate was set to true, and timeout is null. So this is a falsy value. It's undefined right now. So if it's undefined and this is set to true, well, it's not because it's also undefined. If it were true, then it would run the function right now. We're checking down here at the bottom if call now is true. Both those things have to be true for it to happen. Clear timeout. We're getting rid of the timeout. So if this function has been called, by a set timeout, we're clearing that out, then we're recalling it. We're saying, okay, call this function later, the one that's called later, call this after wait. Wait is coming from here, which is the 300 milliseconds. So we're saying wait, whatever the, the governor is, whatever that delay is, wait that amount of time to call this function. This function is this one right here. Inside of later, we'll open that up. We're calling this from a set timeout. So we're going to clear out the timeout to make sure it's not recorded anymore. There's no more reference to it. If not immediate, well, it's undefined. Function apply context. While well, the context is this. This part right here really is just saying call this function, which was the one that I passed in. That's my original search function. So we're saying call the search function and pass in its arguments. Well, its arguments, that's the EV. We already talked about the args right here. So the event is being passed into our search function, the original one. We just wrapped it up again. But we could just put the word search here. We could be referring to this search function. I just did it separately to show what we were doing here. OK, so the later is going to be called after the delay. And this is what's happening every time. Every 300 milliseconds, it keeps checking to see, has it been long enough? We're doing a set timeout. If it's been long enough, this thing is running. And that's it. That is debounce. It is just a way to limit the number of times a function gets called. So we've changed this to efficient search now. So if we jump back over inside here, I'll refresh just to be sure. Now, there it is. So we saw there was a little bit of a, a delay there, just a, a short little delay, because I typed quickly. And there it is. We're back to nothing in there. There's 
like that. We'll try corn. There, we type quickly. There's a little bit of a delay, but if I'm typing slower, you can see that it is doing this change. And you can play with that delay amount. You can play with it until you get a time delay that feels right for you for whatever it is that you're trying to do. So I will add the link to the promises video and I will add a link to the source code for this page so you can play with it and you can look closer at the debounce function. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.